All right, let's verify some more trig identities. We want to prove that cosecant is equal to secant of x plus cosecant of x over 1 plus tangent of x. Now, in general, our plan is to start with the ugly side and turn it into the pretty side. So, my ugly side is obviously the fraction. So, we have to write it down exactly the way it looks without doing anything to it. But what can we do to it? Um, when I see that 1 plus tangent, the denominator, that kind of looks Pythagorean, but nothing squared. Um, and I don't really see anything else. So when you're kind of stuck, a good place to go is turn it all into sines and cosines. So like secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And in the denominator, we'll have 1 plus tangent, which is sine over cosine. Then we can uh, start using our basic algebra. Uh, we're going to add a couple fractions together. So in my numerator, we need to get a common denominator, which would be cosine sine, which means the one that's above the cosine would have to get multiplied by sine. And the one that's above the sine has to get multiplied by cosine. In my denominator, we need a common denominator. That would be cosine and it means the 1 would have to be multiplied by cosine. So we'll have cosine of x plus the sine of x. Now we have a fraction divided by a fraction. So dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to do that. Sine of x plus cosine x over cosine sine. And then we'll multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So cosine over the cosine plus sine. Cosine x plus sine x. And then we look to see if anything can cancel. And I do have this sine plus cosine and cosine plus sine. Those are the same. They'll cancel. And we'll also have cosine over cosine. Those two will cancel as well. So we're left with 1 over sine. All right. And the reciprocal of sine of x is uh, cosecant of x, which is the other side of our identity. When we want to verify cosine beta over 1 minus sine beta is equal to 1 plus sine beta over cosine beta. Um, our, our plan is to start with the ugly side and turn it into pretty side. The thing is, these two fractions look equally as beautiful to me. You may also be tempted to look at this as an equation and try and solve this equation um, and do some cross multiplying and things like that but we're trying to verify an identity and we can't deal with both sides at the same time like that. We do have to start with one side in particular. Since um, they're both about the same I'm just gonna take the first one. So cosine beta over 1 minus sine beta and see what we can do to that. Now we have everything in terms of sines and cosines, um, but I don't see any other identities that we can use. I do have that 1 minus sine beta in the denominator, which almost looks Pythagorean, except it's not because nothing is squared. Um, but we can apply some algebra to it to turn it into a Pythagorean identity. I'd really like that thing to say 1 minus sine squared. And I know that if I multiplied 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine, then we would end up with that difference of 2 squares. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by that. And so that I don't actually change the value of the fraction, I'm going to multiply the numerator by the same thing. Then, when we do that multiplication, I'm going to leave this factor as cosine times 1 plus sine. And when we multiply out that denominator, we will get our difference of 2 squares, 1 minus sine squared, beta. Now we can apply that Pythagorean identity to the denominator. So my numerator will stay the same. But 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. And so now we can do some canceling since I have a factor of cosine in the numerator. 
and in the denominator, then we can uh, cancel that and we're left with one plus sine over cosine, which is the other side of our identity, so we can stop right there. Before we get into the next example, I, I want to remind you how we factor the sum or difference of two cubes. And if you recall, the sum or difference of two cubes is going to factor into a smaller factor and a larger factor. The smaller factor is going to be pretty straightforward. It'll just be a plus b. But to come up with the larger factor, it's going to have three terms. Um, and what I always tell myself is square together square. And what I mean by that is I go back to my first factor that I have, that a plus b, and I'm going to square the a. I'm going to multiply a times b. I'm going to put those two together, a, b. And then I'm going to square the b. The only thing that's left is to put the signs in. We always finish up when we're squaring. That should always be a plus. But what's in the middle should be the opposite of what's in the middle of our smaller fraction. Factor. So when it says a plus b first, then it'll be a squared minus ab plus b squared. If we were to start with a cubed minus b cubed, the difference of two cubes, then to factor that, we would take the cubed root of each term, so a minus b, and then square together square. Squaring the a, uh, putting the two together, a, b, and then squaring the b. We always finish with the plus, but what's in the middle has to be opposite of what's in the middle over there. Okay. Why we needed to practice factoring that is because now we want to prove that sine cubed of x plus cosine cubed of x over sine x plus cosine x is equal to 1 minus sine times cosine. So we have that sum of two cubes. Now before you get all excited and start factoring everything, remember, be calm, our very first step is to rewrite the ugly side exactly the way that it looks with no changes to it. So we have cosine cubed or sine cubed plus cosine cubed over sine plus cosine. Then we can start factoring it. And since that numerator is the sum of two cubes, we can factor it into a small factor and a large factor. The smaller factor is the cube root of each term. So sine plus cosine. And then my larger factor is square together square. So squaring the sine, multiplying those two together, sine cosine, and then squaring the cosine. We always finish with a plus, and what's in the middle has to be the opposite of what's in the middle of the smaller factor, so minus. In the denominator, we just leave it as it sits, and then look for some things to cancel. Um, and we see the, our small factors, sine plus cosine, factors with the denominator. That's nice. And we're left with sine squared. And I'm going to, just to rearrange things a little bit, I'm going to bring that cosine squared right next to it, minus sine of x, cosine of x. Uh, I did that, I rearranged it like that because Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And once we replace that, we are left with the right side of our identity, so we're done. Last one, let's prove that tangent to the fourth of theta minus 1 is equal to secant of, to the fourth of theta minus 2 secant squared of theta. Um, you might look at this as being pretty even as far as which side is pretty side, which side is ugly side. I'm going to take the secant side first because this side has two terms with trig uh, functions in them, whereas the tangent side only has one. Uh, the other thing is I see that there's a common factor in each of these two terms that I can factor out a secant squared out of each term. So when I factor out a secant squared out of secant to the fourth, we're left with secant squared. And factoring out a secant squared out of two secant squared leaves me with two. 
Now we don't have a Pythagorean identity for secant squared minus 2. But we do have an identity for secant squared minus 1. So secant squared minus 2 is secant squared minus 1 minus 1. Then I can replace secant squared minus 1 with tangent squared. So I have secant squared times tangent squared minus 1. We can also use a Pythagorean identity on that secant squared as well because secant squared is tangent squared plus 1. And we'll multiply that by tangent squared minus 1. And multiplying this all out, we have two conjugates here. So that's going to end up with the difference of two squares. So tangent squared squared is tangent to the fourth. Minus 1 times 1 is 1. And there is the left side of our identity.